Mass of the Ages, a review. The film trilogy, Mass of the Ages, is being used to steer people towards the extraordinary form of the Mass and away from the ordinary form. Propaganda. It makes use of a whole range of standard propaganda techniques. Exaggeration, distortion, subjective comments, generalizations, appeal to emotion, appeal to popular myths. The old form of the mass is presented at its best and the new form at its worst. Myths about the pre-Vatican II mass. Comparatively few old form masses are said around the world today. They often seem to be offered with conscious decorum in high church settings and with fine music. We should note that before Vatican II, the liturgical practice was largely that of the low mass, often said in quite ordinary settings with very little priestly flair. The people in the pews were often involved in their own personal prayers. Coincidence equals cause. Mass of the Ages suggests that the new form of Mass as such caused the decline in faith practice over the past 50 years. It's more plausible to attribute this decline to the social upheavals stemming from the 1960s, which ushered in a complete culture of irreligion and secular values. And we can certainly blame those responsible for the liturgy who have from the outset ignored the church's liturgical norms and eroded people's sense of the sacred. The Bonini Myths Myth number one. Mass of the Ages buys into the idea that the new order of Mass was the work of one disreputable man, Annabale Bonini. Facts about this man's involvement in the reform of the liturgy do not support this. Bonini was secretary to the Concilium, the large group of prelates and experts set up to facilitate the reform of the liturgy ordered by Vatican II. They worked for four years, consulting with the bishops of the world, the Congregation for Worship, and the Pope. The new order of Mass is not a one-man production. Myth number two. As for Bonini's reputation as a Freemason, there is no evidence for this. The only evidence cited is that in the 1970s, Pope Paul banished him to Tehran as nuncio. The big questions are then, why did the Pope promote Bonini? Why did the Pope not defrock him? Why did the Pope not excommunicate him? Myth number three. Mass of the Ages makes a serious and unjust mistake in misquoting Bonini in order to show that Bonini set out to Protestantize the Mass. The Mass of the Ages misquote. The road to union with our separated brethren, the Protestants, is to remove every stone from the liturgy, every prayer from the Mass, that could even remotely be an obstacle or difficulty. The actual quote from Bernini is from Le Servitore Romano 1965, which refers to one prayer, that of the New Rite's seventh prayer for the Good Friday intercessions, which bears the title, Quote from Bunini, 
for the unity of Christians, not of the church, which was always one. No longer used is the pariah heretics and schismatics, but all brethren who believe in Christ. Bonini goes on, and yet it is the love of souls and the desire to help in any way the road to union of the separated brethren by removing every stone that could even remotely constitute an obstacle or difficulty that has driven the church to make even these painful sacrifices. So to repeat, Bonini's statement refers to only one prayer of the Good Friday liturgy. Misinformation The Tree Diagram Mass of the Ages shows two tree diagrams accompanying explanations by Dr. Peter Kwasniewski. The first shows the organic growth of liturgical features over history. The second shows the destruction of the liturgy by the liturgical reforms of post-Vatican II. This is simply a false depiction of the situation. Practically all of the old form elements are still there, or at least available in the new. It also ignores the fact that in other eras, elements were taken on and left out of the liturgy. For instance, the Council of Trent brought in the prayers at the foot of the altar, several offertory prayers, not present, for instance, in another Latin rite, the Dominican rite, which is older than the 1570 Missal, prayers after the dismissal, including the Last Gospel, a new calendar, and the low mass, which became the norm. Some things taken out. Prayers of the faithful, the offertory procession, some feast days, which were restored by later popes. Other forms of the Latin rite, less than 200 years old, were largely prohibited after 1570. Organic growth. Organic growth means continuity in the substance of the Mass, with alterations to accidentals. Pope Pius XII said in Mediata Dei, number 63, It is true that the Church is a living organism, and therefore grows and develops also in her liturgical worship. It is also true that, always saving the integrity of her doctrine, she accommodates herself to the needs and conditions of the times. Overall, the faulty premises in the tree theory are, one, that everything added must stay, which is clearly not what has happened in liturgical history. Two, that restoration of ancient custom is not legitimate, which is what has happened in liturgical history. Three, that the substance of the mass and its accidental elements are on a par in importance, which can't be, and has never been the case in liturgical history. Slashing the Mass Text Another diagram in Mass of the Ages shows the texts of the old form of the Mass being blanked out, suggesting that the writer of the new form has almost gutted it. This is misleading, in that this diagram cancels out many elements of this Mass which are actually still there in the new form in modified or unmodified forms. False Ideas of the Vatican II Liturgy Vatican II is treated negatively in the Mass of the Ages, there are comments in the film insinuating that the Vatican II liturgy, throughout Latin, made the use of the vernacular mandatory, outlawed Gregorian chant and sacred polyphony, forced the priest to say Mass versus Populum, introduced communion in the hand, omitted half the prayers, destroyed the offertory rite, and introduced novelties like more scripture readings, offertory processions and prayers of the faithful. It does not acknowledge the fact that it is possible for a priest to celebrate a Novus Ordo Mass using practically all those elements regarded as lost at Vatican II, Latin, Ad Orientum, Gregorian chant, incense, etc. In fact, more and more priests are doing so. Thank you.
salutare. Nosti vi semper rubique gratia sacere. Domine sancte pater omnipotens eterne de. The mishandling of the Novus Ordo. In discussing the Novus Ordo, Mass of the Ages doesn't make a proper distinction between the Novus Ordo and what the innovators did and do to it. It doesn't draw our attention to the fact that the worst destruction of the Novus Ordo was done by priests and bishops formed in the years prior to the Council. Obviously, there were flaws in their theological and liturgical formation under the old form. An unbroken progression of liturgical purity. The picture drawn of an unbroken progression of liturgical fidelity and purity prior to Vatican II is a fantasy. Liturgical history is actually quite chaotic. Dr. Geoffrey Hull, who is no fan of the new Mass, reports in his historical study of the Mass, The Banished Heart, that one of the bad fruits of the post-Tridentine Church was that provided the validity and integrity of the rite was preserved, it might be performed in a way influenced by the styles of the particular time. So the Mass of St. Pius V could be performed in the 17th and 18th century in a Baroque style of grand opera, in the 19th century in an artificial mock Gothic, and in the 1960s before the new Mass with electric guitars and pop tunes. The Commentaries The commentaries by various experts in the course of Mass of the Ages are a mix of views from prominent internet figures who have been known for their extreme and even heretical views, emotional perspectives, comments by priests and bishops who echo the popular traditionalist mantras, a great opportunity missed. On the whole, the film bypasses a great opportunity for explaining the Mass, its meaning and significance. For decades before Vatican II, the Popes and the Congregation for Rites supported the liturgical movement, initiated by certain Benedictine monasteries and liturgical scholars, such as Father Pius Pasch, Dom Lambert Bodwin, Father Romano Guadini and Dom Odo Casal. Vatican II brought many of their ideals to the fore in Sacrosanctum Concilium. It is the wish of the Church to undertake a careful general reform of the liturgy in order that the Christian people may be more certain to derive an abundance of graces from it. For the liturgy is made up of unchangeable elements divinely instituted and of elements subject to change." End quote but we're obviously still at the stage where most people have very limited and rather distorted ideas about the Mass. The Pope has written a letter to the whole Church calling for education in the sacred liturgy. I would like this letter to help us to rekindle our wonder for the beauty of the truth of the Christian celebration, to remind us of the necessity of an authentic liturgical formation and to recognise the importance of an art of celebrating that is at the service of the truth of the Paschal mystery and of the participation of all the baptised in it, each one according to his or her vocation. All this richness is not far from us. End quote. The Congregation for Divine Worship and the Sacraments is to issue instructions on how this might happen. If our energies and convictions were to be focused on the doctrines about the Mass, instead of purely subjective romantic ideals and misinformation, we might have a chance of implementing Vatican II's ideals and those of Samorum Pontificum. We might have a chance of ending the present futile liturgical wars which are so damaging the Church. <laughs>